Hey everybody and welcome back to the Hobby Dude 007 channel. Quick bench update today. I want to give you a little progress report on our 32nd scale super detailed Lumina for Acme. I want to show you a few things before it gets the final coat of primer and starting getting color on it. So the next video you see, a lot of this is going to have the colors on it. So stick around. Okay guys, so where we are right now with the body, a lot of this stuff as you can see is really smooth, looking really good. I got some sanding to do on the inside again. You remember this had the roll bars molded in to the side, so we had to remove all that. Uh, there's a couple of other little spots on the inside I want to sand again, but overall the exterior of the body is looking really, really good. You can see here where we added the hinge tabs for the front. Now they were already back here on the back. I'd already had those on. And uh, so we've added those. And uh, this, by the way, it'll get a water sand and then one more coat of primer. Um, and then there's the one for the other side. And then we'll go ahead and get our interior shot. And if you've ever seen one of the Goodrich cars up close, one of Dale's cars, they were a red orange. And the exact match for that I'm going to be using MP, yeah, MPC, <laughs> MCW um, Poppy Red Gloss Lacquer. I like their lacquers, but for some of the touch-up in some small spots, I also have a little bit thicker a bottle of the enamels. This is the same number, just with the E on the end for the enamels. And it is, if I can get the light right, it is a dead match. I've taken a little bit out, put it on a uh, piece of white paper and matched it up and it, it is a match um, but we'll be doing small touch-up stuff with the enamel but most of it I'm going to be doing in the MCW lacquer and the poppy red like I said you can see and I hope you can on camera it's got more orange than red so to speak well wait a minute there's just a regular red and you see how much more orange. Oh, this one is actually an old Model Master Italian Red. Which, Italian Red has some orange in it, but you see how much more orange the uh, Poppy Red is. So we're going to be using that, and we'll be doing, of course, under the hood, trunk, all the inside once I get that straightened out and reprimed, uh, as well as the chassis, the roll bars, all of that stuff uh, for that era Lumina. So, and by the way, our primer we're going to be using, uh, as I usually do, the uh, to me a fine surface primer. They've got a regular primer in a bunch of colors, and they've also got um, the uh, fine surface primer, which is an ultra fine. I mean, check that out. Look how smooth that is. Uh, and that hadn't even been sanded yet. And I'm going to hit it one more time, and then one more coat of this. Um, but the fine surface primer comes in uh, the red oxide, white, and I use white and gray more than any. But for a black, I'm probably going to use um, this one. But a lot of times for a darker color like that, I'll use the red oxide. But anyway, so that's going to be our primary colors. But let me show you a few other things we've done. On the front suspension, we've added our... Um, spindle tabs sticking out here. I've modified where the springs were molded in. Let me get my pointer here. The springs were molded in and they attached to the chassis because remember this was a snap tight kit and you can see the little round indention there where I cut that off and we'll be making springs and I'll show you how we're going to do that in one of the upcoming videos. We added some tabs here to give a much more flush fit and the plastic bar that went across here I removed drilled out a hole and you see that we've got a uh, a piece of rod that I've just got slipped in there right now for fit and I'll cut that off and of course this will be fitting right here on the chassis and like I said when you see it next you'll see the uh, Oops. Well, if I can get it. There we go. Um, the upper A-arm and then the spring 
bucket right here, upper and lower, will be making a spring to go in there, of course. Um, and this will be painted probably in the morning. The uh, center bar, which is welded to the chassis, or is actually part of the chassis, and then we'll mask that off and shoot the uh, lower A arms in uh, semi gloss black. Moving to the rear, there was a lot of changes. This is the stock snap together rear end. And as you see, there's no shock, or excuse me, there's no springs. Well, there's no shocks either, but there's no springs. You see this little round tab where it just snaps up into the chassis. Well, that just didn't cut it. And notice the drive shaft is molded. Uh, all this is one piece. And of course, the brake discs and the little snap on tabs for the uh, uh, tires to pop on. Well, all of this, of course, we've, we've removed. I even removed the uh, uh, track bar. Uh, all of this has been drilled out, and this, and I'm hoping you can see it because in the being black, I don't know if you're going to be able to. You notice in the top of the pumpkin here, there is a giant gaping hole. Uh, and if you look at it straight down from here, you see there's there's just that big chunk missing. I, sorry, I'm knocking the camera around. Missing right here. And there's also holes. And again, the lighting is, there you go, right there and right there. And then there's an injection mold in the corners. So all that, man, I'll just keep hitting the camera. Uh, all of that had to be removed and built back up. So we removed the drive shaft. I'll show you what we're going to do with that. The uh, cooling, rear end cooling pump, we've got uh, our holes drilled here and here for that. And you see what we did on these holes. Well, let me show you this picture before uh, we put primer on it. You see where the plastic rod was put down in those, filled in, and it's been sanded smooth. And then I just used some scrap sheet plastic and uh, filled up that great big hole, um, as you see here. And then we've got our final coat of putty over it. And as you see here, we've got a round shape back to the top. You'll also see these holes right back here. These are for the shocks, so we're adding shocks. The track bar is gonna be more accurate. It's gonna be a, uh, a piece of uh, metal rod, and you see the hole we've got here. And then we've got, for those cooling lines that come out of the pump, we've got the two back here on the rear end. And by the way, we've added these little nubs sticking out here, and those are for, of course, to hold those marvelous disc brakes that we made. And there you go. And in 30 second scale, I, I'm having a lot of fun with this. It's, it's a little frustrating because everything was designed to be a snap together and I'm having to modify. To be honest with you, I'm having to modify a whole lot more than I thought I was gonna have to modify. But I'm still having a blast, guys. And where these springs were, or I keep wanting to say springs, but where these tall tabs were here that represent the springs, you see we've added spring buckets. And we'll be making, again, springs. And you can see the, the, the round spring buckets on the trailing arms, truck arms, whatever you want to call them. Um... And by the way, you see the holes here and here, which will be the retainers that wrap around and bolt. You see the bolts on the bottom there, too. And uh, again, this will all be uh, painted um, the poppy red and the semi-gloss black when you see it, uh, hopefully in a few days. This is not the dash I'm going to be using, um, but I've got it set in here as a, a mock-up just so I can start. You see where I cut away a lot of the bars and that will be uh, going back in here, and we'll be making some other bars. I'd mentioned in one of the other videos, this chassis, the bodies are made of styrene. This stuff is not styrene. This, this plastic is that kind of, I don't know what you'd call it. But if you're going to do different types of plastic together, sometimes styrene plastic doesn't always work as far as joining things together. So let me make a recommendation. What I have found over the years that works for bonding different types of plastic together. And I, I'm big on my testers, liquid cement, as well as 
the Tamiya Extra Thin and the Extra Thin Quick Set. But when it comes to bonding different types of plastic, Plastrux Bondine is the plastic. Now, I, I have built entire models off of this. Uh, but this stuff, as a solvent goes, is absolutely awesome. Uh, it's an extremely strong bond. Works great. I recommend trying it. There's also another one that uh, works on all kinds of other plastics beyond styrene, ABS, all that stuff. It's got an orange label. Uh, and I'm trying to remember what the specific for that is. But e either one, I have always found works really, really good for two different types of plastic. Let me show you the chassis real quick. I showed you the spring buckets on the uh, the trailing arms. Well, to make this a little more accurate, you see where, if I can get the light right, you see where we've added um, a section of the chassis that was not seen. And, of course, this was snapped together. It was designed to be a toy. Uh, we're just taking it further than that. But we've gone ahead and added uh, that section of uh, frame, the framework, the chassis that normally you wouldn't see. And we built the spring buckets, as you see in these pictures. It might be easier to see them that way. There's your frame rails and the spring buckets. And those line right up. Of course, this was all test fit. A number of times speaking of which there's some stuff drying on the Corvette and you'll be seeing an update on that too but uh, as you can see I hope the spring buckets line straight up with each other is that not cool and um, then we'll be scratch building our sh uh, shocks as well as um, the retainer chain that goes here so all of the stuff that you would normally see. And then you've got your lines. I want you to see this before the final primer to see just the scratch belt parts. Um, because once this is primed, you might not notice. And then the uh, for the rear end cooler here, um, we've got our holes drilled. As you see here. And then... The two holes right well, I hope you can see them the lighting is not conducive to showing it very easily here that'll come out of here and go through here and then back around to the the cool the pump the cooling so um, I, I'm really pleased with where this is so far um, lots yet to do a whole lot yet to do got a lot of scratch building in the the roll cage area and all that stuff and uh, the dash, the flat black is on it. It's in the dehydrator. But here's a picture of it before. Um, hold on here. I'm dropping stuff, guys. Sorry about that. Um, before the black was on it, uh, the roll bar that runs underneath it, the access panel to the gauges, and you see here the small little pieces of aluminum um, that are going to be the gauge backs, which are going to look very much like this in the... Uh, Days of Thunder car, the Superflow car. So we're going to be getting some color on this thing. I've got a little bit of sanding left to do on this, but probably in the next hour or two we'll get the some the the poppy red on this stuff and then get it masked off. Do the other, and um, get our final coat of primer and stuff on the chassis and and final sanding on the inside of the body. But that's where we are with that right now, guys. And again, there'll be an update on the Corvette coming up pretty soon too guys head over to hobby nut models check out mark's inventory pick you up some mcw paints great stuff uh and if you're doing it in our heart heart remember poppy red all right guys thanks a bunch god bless we'll see you in the next video thanks guys